That's why I'm standing on it. What? Hey, what are you, nuts? My house is burning and my son's inside. <coughs> I need to report a fire. The building's only 50% involved. Our guys got here fast. Not fast enough. CO asphyxiation. Never woke up. What were the suspicious origins? Some kind of accelerant was definitely used. Is that the mother? Yeah, Mrs. Parnell. What can you tell us about your son? What do you mean? What kind of condition did he have exactly? What difference does that make now? Probably none. It would just help us to understand the situation. He had developmental problems. Um, I had a difficult um, pregnancy. He, he had respiratory problems and some learning disability. Nothing that matters now. We were told that Ian was prone to starting fires. I stopped smoking so there wouldn't be matches around. I replaced the gas stove in the apartment with an electric. Was he out of your sight long enough to have set that fire? Since you stopped smoking, where do you get the matches? I don't know. I must have had a pack hidden away somewhere. Mommy! Mommy, watch me! Excuse me. Wherever she hid them, you must have found them. And the paint thinner? He had a history of starting fires. He could have set this one and then forgotten about it. Gone to sleep and died of smoke inhalation. I'm just not sure this kid was capable of setting this fire. But you said he set them in the past. Hey, setting a match to a newspaper is one thing. Here he's dragging something to stand on over to the closet door, reaching up for the key, unlocking the door, pulling out the can of paint thinner, opening it, pouring it. Yeah, but did he know the paint thinner would work? I mean, what, what is this kid's IQ? His father and his mother have completely different stories. I went to bed at 10.30, woke up, smelled smoke, and ran out of my room. Where'd you go? I told you where I went. I went to try and save my son. But you couldn't. No, I couldn't. I went to try to open his door, and the doorknob was too hot to touch. Plus, there was flames and smoke, and I couldn't get in. The problem is, Mrs. Parnell, is that your son's door wasn't closed. It wasn't closed? These marks on the ceiling show that it was open. I remember it being closed. If I'm wrong, maybe I was in a state of panic or... You also never went to bed. What are you talking about? Your bedroom door was closed. It slowed down the fire. Your bed was completely intact. See? Like it pulled all the way up to the top of the bed. That bed was never slept in. It was a warm night. I slept on top of the blankets. You're not helping yourself, Megan. Are you saying I killed my own son? What we're saying is you were in a desperate situation, and maybe without meaning to, you looked to get out of it. I never looked to get out of anything. The fire was set, Megan. So what? So why is it you think I'm the only one who could have set it? We found paint thinner on your nightgown. Talk to a lawyer. I think maybe she's right. He's hoping a jury will find her too sympathetic to convict. Is she? Not as far as I'm concerned. She kills her son. She sets fire to a building and endangers who knows how many other people's lives. Once you get past her being pretty, I don't think she's got a lot else going for her. She did spend the last 12 years taking care of this kid. Well, that's what she's supposed to do. I understand. We still have to expect them to use our son's condition to cultivate sympathy for the defendant. Then you use it to cultivate sympathy for her son. Is taking the life of a person with disabilities any less of a crime than taking the life of a person without them? Absolutely not. Since the underlying crime is arson, why aren't we trying her for felony murder? There's not a jury in the world that would convict her of it. Are we vulnerable to a defense of extreme emotional disturbance, bringing it down to manslaughter? I don't think it's proximate enough in time. 
The extreme emotional disturbance is one she was living with for 12 years. We have her deliberately setting the fire. Yes, and we have a witness we're hoping will give us her state of mind at the time Abby needs to interview her. Well, if we have her for the fire, then we have her for murder, too. Short version, she's not insane. Not now, not the night she set the fire. And the long version. For a murderess, she's very appealing. Well, when she's released from prison, you can ask her out. I meant appealing from the standpoint that she suffered from significant mental problems. Like what? Acute anxiety, depression, chronic sleep deprivation. Her son never allowed her to sleep for more than two hours at a time. Well, I don't think the penal code has been amended to include fatigue as a defense for murder. I feel for her. She was terrified by all kinds of images she thought her son would have to endure if he was taken away from her. She was exhausted beyond all measure. For one short, horrible instant, she thought the way to solve her problems was to burn them down. But she wasn't insane. No, she wasn't insane. Ms. Parnell, when your son's health began deteriorating, what did you do? We tried low vas intervention, auditory interpretation, steroids, several different diets, clonidine. Every month there was a new treatment, a, a new miracle cure. We have such high hopes. Nothing helped. What about special ed? He hated special ed. It was always too loud and disturbing. When my marriage started falling apart, we tried sending Ian to respite care for the weekend, but they'd call us up usually by Friday night to take him back. And then he started having seizures, and I, I was, I was afraid that he'd do. kill himself. So. Ian, he needed me, but he was getting too big, and he stopped letting me change his diaper or brush his teeth or give him medicine. I couldn't take care of him anymore. Why didn't you send him somewhere? Whether it was an institution or a group home, whatever it was, some place would have taken him off your hands. I couldn't. To, to other people, he was just some weird kid who threw his poop around the room and to me when he was listening to old MacDonald he was my baby and I, I loved him so much your witness Mr. McCoy <laughs> Ms. Parnell Her plea is not guilty by reason of insanity. Yes. That means that at the time you set the fire, you didn't know right from wrong. I didn't know what I was doing. You knew enough to lie to the police. I didn't mean to lie to them. You knew enough to go downstairs, unlock the janitor's closet, pour paint thinner on the steps, and leave your son to die in a fire. No, I did not. Ms. Parnell, is it? Or is it not true that you willfully and deliberately set the fire in which your son My died? My son didn't die in the fire. He died before the fire. The coroner's report states that the cause of death was smoke inhalation. He was having a seizure, and he went into convulsions, and I had the syringe to give him his injection to stop the convulsions, just like I've done all those times before, but this time, I, I didn't do it. I, I watched his body contorting in pain. That poor, tortured little body that never stopped hurting, and I didn't do it. I let him go, and then I, I, I went into the bathroom, and I took his pills, all of them, and I swallowed them. I set the fire, and I laid down next to him to die myself. But you changed your mind. The smoke made me cough. 
and the pills didn't work. <laughs> and I started to think about my daughter. And I got up and I ran outside and I, I grabbed the phone out of some guy's hand and I, I dialed 911 and I never would have set the fire if I'd known Ian was alive. I never would have done that to him. I never would have made him suffer like that. He suffered so much in his life. Is she telling the truth? I mean, he said the kid could have been in a coma from the seizures. She thought he was dead. In fact, he was still breathing, just enough to get some smoke into his lungs. Why'd she wait this long to tell us? It's possible she suppressed her memory of that night. It's possible she felt too guilty to fully participate in her own defense. It's also possible that her lawyer isn't the idiot we take him for. He held on to this until he thought it would do the most good. No, he's an idiot. What's the likelihood of getting a conviction on murder, too? Nil. Unless the jury thinks she's lying. I don't think she's lying. Assume she's not. That's manslaughter. Given her state of mind and the extenuating circumstances, I don't think what she did warrants a conviction for manslaughter. And what do you think? Marshal of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade? I don't think we should be sending her to prison. Her failure to act comes under depraved indifference. It qualifies as manslaughter under people v. Little. If that's what the judge charges on, that's what the jury will convict her for. We have the evidence to support that. Yes. In this case, for this defendant, the penalties are too severe. We can't let our sympathy for a defendant distort our primary responsibility. What are you saying? You've got to do your job, Jack. Will the defendant please rise? What is your verdict? We, the jury, on the charge of murder in the second degree, find the defendant not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect. Thank you for your verdict, ladies and gentlemen. The defendant is hereby remanded to Kirby Forensic Center for evaluation. <laughs>